It's a day. Mm-hmm. If we gave everybody a million dollars right now, right now, everybody's account, one million dollars. Mm -hmm. We took everybody's debt away right now. No debt. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem tomorrow would be that people can't forgive and people don't want to forget. Well, that person shot my boy. Mm -hmm. Well, that person slept with this and this happened and this happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a mental thing. It is. Right. It and is. and people are addicted to negative thoughts yes. because the negative thoughts produce yes. a negative chemical in their yes. body yes. and their body gets addicted to it mm -hmm. no different from alcohol. Yes. And uh, they also love the negative thoughts because when somebody victimizes you, you can create an identity out of the victimization, which then absolves you of any responsibility or accountability for the role you played in the problem. Do you follow what I'm saying? So we love to be victims because while I'm a victim, I don't have to be held accountable for nothing I did. That's where the victim consciousness comes from. You don't have to be responsible while you're being a victim. Even when you look at black folks, right? Some of us have a victim consciousness. I don't. You know why we have a victim consciousness? Because as long as I'm a victim of white America, I don't have to be responsible for how I'm spending my money. I don't have to be responsible for the music I'm letting my children listen to. I don't have to be responsible for the way that I treat black women. I don't have to be responsible for the rap music I'm listening to that's calling my women bees and holes. You see, the victim consciousness absolves you of responsibility. That's why we love it. Responsibility to me, when I defined it, is being responsible for your abilities. And yes. only you know what your abilities yes. are. Yes. Only you. Yes. So that whole victim mindset just blew me because it's like, wow, that does take the responsibility yes. out of it. Yes. For me, you know, I think it's important to always look within. Always look within Absolutely. at all times. Right now, as we talk, I'm not here to listen to say that's wrong, that's right, right that's right. right. I'm here to, one, mm -hmm. get my divine message from you because mm -hmm. I know that I was supposed to get And vice versa. You. Right. Yes, sir. Two, I am here to understand, to listen, and to learn as much as I can. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not talking a lot because mm -hmm. you can't learn while you speak. Yes. You know? Um, speaking of learning, what have you learned today? I have hope more than I've ever had for disc jockeys such as yourself, <laughs> because as someone who gets interviewed as much as I do, I don't have a lot of good things to say about the interviews that have been conducted on major platforms such as this. And there's exceptions to that. Of course. Breakfast Club is one. They do a very thorough interview. There's a few others. They do a very thorough interview. You follow. But normally when I come on a major it's all sensationalism. You mm. follow me? Where did you get your degree? Mm. Uh, did you really buy the schools? Everything that's external. Everything that's external. You follow? So I'm like, wow, okay. Maybe I can take a few more of these because I get requests all the time. And I'm like, nah, that's going to be drama. That's going to be, you know. So this, what I've learned is what I've already known, but a, a reinforcement of it. Be patient with your people. Because mm. although you may not come across a whole lot who are enlightened, there are many of them who are. My thing is to be patient, because with the Leo energy, the Ogun energy, and I have them both, patience is not a virtue for us. I've learned most of my patience in being a school psychologist, working with families, being a therapist. You have to be patient, but this is political. So this is teaching me to even be patient with folks in certain professions that I really haven't had a lot of patience with, because in my opinion, black media, has done me a greater disservice than white media because they have sensationalized and taken out of context things that I've said. They've been the ones that go on crusades, miseducating the public about what I really am. And when you look at the history of black media, it started with a who? Pan-Africanist. John Brown Rustworm from Jamaica who started Freedom's Journal newspaper with Samuel Cornish in New York in 1831. And what was the original purpose of black media? To educate and advocate. And I think black media needs to get back to doing that. And that's why I commend you, brother, because again, I didn't expect the quality of interview that we're having on a major platform. It's on air with sir. We'll be back. I am excited, man. I got a special guest today. But first, my co-host, Pearlene B by my side. What's good? Hey, how you doing, bro? Oh, I'm doing good. Who is our special guest for today? Ooh, 
I'm excited, bro. So today, we have an amazing man born right here in Philadelphia, PA. Hey. Dr. Umar Johnson. That's right. Well, also love. known as Dr. Umar to friends, is a doctor of clinical psychology and certified school psychologist. Uh -uh. He uses uh -uh. education and knowledge hey. in many ways hey. for many people. For mental health of African and African American and men, women, and children. He is founder of many worldwide movements and author. Make sure you go to his website, Dr. Umar Johnson. He says, strive for perseverance, deliver excellence. Let's get to know from the mind of Dr. Umar Johnson. Appreciate it. Dr. Umar Johnson, yes, welcome Thank to the you, show. Sir. Glad to be here. Man, question. Is this your first time on Boom? Yes, it is. Hey! Here we go. Here we go. Well, listen, man. Thanks for taking out the time. I understand how valuable time is today. Yes, sir. And I appreciate you sharing some of yours with Anytime. us. This is like, this is what I call the Love on Purpose radio show. Okay. Right. And all we do is love on purpose. Yes, sir. So I have a few questions for sure. you. How do you define love? Wow. For me, love is one's commitment to an individual or an idea for which they're willing to sacrifice any and all things, including their life. Mm, okay. Define God for me. God is the incomprehensible, essential origin, and guiding power for all that exists. Mm, mm, okay. Des describe, define happiness for me. Happiness versus peace of mind. Mm. I'm going to define both. <laughs> Because too often individuals are in search of happiness. And I guess I'm coming from my psychotherapist perspective here. But happiness is an emotion. You can never be constantly happy. If someone you love dies, you can't be happy at that moment. If you lose a job you love, you can't be happy at that moment. But you can be at peace. Mm. And I think that we have to start striving to be at peace with no matter what comes as opposed to constantly searching for happiness because happiness comes and goes. Happiness is based on the circumstances at the moment. So you can be happy, you can be not so happy, but you can always be at peace with what is. It's like losing someone you love. I'm not happy I lost that person, but I'm at peace that it was their time to go. Mm. So I think we should strive to be at peace with all that is, recognizing that happiness will come and go, but peace can remain. Define an emotion. What is an emotion? Emotion is our immediate intellectual response to circumstances that occur that may or may not be happen with that may or may not be accurate. Meaning we have to be patient with circumstances so that we do not assign them an emotion too soon only to find out later that your interpretation was wrong. Let me Ooh. give you an example. <laughs> Let's say you was there to see her. You love that sister. You yes. loved her deeply. Yes. You find out she cheated or she just wanted to end the relationship. Maybe right. she did nothing poorly. She just decided the time was for her to move on. You interpreted that as a failure, uh, 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 as misery, as trauma. You loved her only to find out Six months later, the woman you really needed walked into your life mm. because you prematurely judged her leaving you as negative. You didn't give yourself time to find or give yourself time to allow God to send you the person who they moved her out of the way for. So we have to stop being so quick to judge circumstances because it may be a blessing in disguise. Mm. Now, are you religious? I'm spiritual. Okay. And the difference between religion and spirituality, three main differences. Number one, religions have all the answers. <laughs> spirituality, <laughs> you see, spirituality doesn't have all the answers. Okay. Spirituality teaches that you have to go and find the answers yourself. Mm. And where can you find the answers? By looking into yourself, mm. Re which is another big difference. Religion teaches you to find God out. Spirituality teaches that God is closer to you and within you. Mm. So it's about going in to find the at on air with sir at boom philly this is hot man thank you so much yes, for stopping yes, by sir. yo go to the gram right now and we're gonna keep it moving it's boom 103.9 philly station for hip-hop and r&b let's go philly listen up check it out man what'd you say the audio was uh philly listen up you yeah, can either yeah, just, yeah. you can either just, I'll go to the now. That's, 
Well, I'll send it to you after, so I'll send you all of it. Oh, okay, yeah, because this, I'm about to be dead. So, yeah, you good. Yeah, so at least we got that point. Thank you. That was, that was a good, great that part. Was good, like, yeah, that was, that was a great hour. That was a good hour, yeah. Yeah, that was a great hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I've ended your phone died, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all the cameras are dying. Yeah. Everybody's dying. <laughs> 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 but I'm going about to go out with mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just popped up. Is your phone charging now? Dr. Umar Johnson is yes, in the building. Sir. It's Boom 103.9. Dr. Umar, I want to talk about the mind. Yes, mind sir. The matter, right? So, you know how, you know how, like, for instance, you might buy a pair of sneakers, mm -hmm. and then, like, you see everybody, and everybody got your sneakers now. You know how you, like, go buy a car, you felt like nobody had the car, right? You, you know about, you see the car everywhere, right? That's because of a system that's in our mind that detects things that we find important. Yes. That that system also keeps us safe. Yes. And back in the day, we used to use that system for the lions and, and you know, mm -hmm. all the danger. Fight but, or flight. Right. But now, we use that system for what can happen. Mm -hmm. Right? All the things that are not here, but just all the things that the mind just gets going. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like we can use that system to better ourselves because we know that it exists. Everybody's mm -hmm. been in that situation. Oh, yes. yeah, I, I just realized it. Yeah, that does happen. Mm -hmm. What is something that we can put our attention on? What is something, what is a way to use the mind mm -hmm. to start going in, in the direction of the divine? I'm going to take a step back, but stay on the question. Because everything you hit on, hit on something that's related to why we do that. And that is our system of values. The reason I will buy the Air Jordans instead of paying for my child's daycare is because I value the way I look in public above and beyond my child's best interest or their education. You see, so we have to change people's values because your spending habits are a function of your values. If black people created a whole new different set of values where we valued each other's well-being above and beyond how any of us list uh any of us look individually then that change of values would dictate a new set of economic behavior mm -hmm. our values are tied up into money being spent to make us look better and this goes back to slavery too because when we first came out of slavery we never were accepted as american black people know that unconsciously even though we like to deny it publicly What's the best way for me to experience America, even though I've been denied the rights of an American? And it is to buy as much junk that America creates and surround me and my family with it to give the impression that I am living the American dream when I'm not. That's why we got to have on the Jordans. That's why I got to have a Maybach. That's why I got to drive a Mercedes that I can hardly afford. Why? Because when people do not experience true freedom, they like to surround themselves with the symbols of it. Mm. Black people buy more Mercedes Benzes than white folk. Explain to me why a people who have one third of the wealth. So you got two groups, one black, one white. The black group has one third or less of the wealth of the white group, but they're buying twice as many Mercedes as the white group. How will you have less capital and less wealth? Because having that Mercedes makes me feel better. It makes me look better. It fills me with pride. That's why a young black man will kill another brother over a pair of Jordans. It ain't because of the Jordans. It's the way the Jordans make me feel. And it's the way the Jordans will make other people look at me. I get respect by adding value to myself vicariously with these expensive items. And that's because we are not who we think we are. And we are not who, you know, like, for instance, I am not who I think I am. Mm -hmm. And I am not who you think I am. I mm -hmm. am who I think you think I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So so back to the question. How can we use that system in our head that will look for different things, mm -hmm. right? To look for opportunities. I don't know if we do that on the individual level. I think we do that on a systemic community level. I think so much of the change that must come, although it has an individual component, I think it needs to be done on a group level. In other words, a whole generation of black children 
need to be taught how to think differently. A whole generation of black children need to be taught how to work interdependently and collectively. A whole generation of black children need to be taught how to value material things less and value living people more. I don't think we get there individually. We can start there. But things have to be done systematically. That's where we're losing because we don't do anything systematically. Sir might make the change. Dr. Umar might make the change. But how do we get this change to manifest on a community-wide level? That's where we're losing. I feel like the way we get the change worldwide, globally, mm -hmm. is through us. It starts with us. It does, but it starts with us creating a system whereby we can socialize the next generation of black children to think a certain way. What is the number one function of a school? It's not to teach. The number one function of the school is to socialize. It's to teach the children how to think and act in unison for the best interests of the American social order. You follow? So I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm simply saying that we have to use the individual power to create a collective system. Otherwise, we get nowhere. You have to change a generation. It only takes one generation. All the problems we've had for 400 years, you can change them in 20 years. If we made up our minds that the babies that are being born in Philadelphia right now will be raised a certain way, fed a certain way, taught to worship a certain way, to spend a certain way, we give them a whole new set of values in 20 years, you would have a new black Philadelphia. It only takes a generation. The problem is we don't raise the new babies right. any different because than we, we think. Because of the way we think. Okay, so here's my thing. So forget racism, mm -hmm. forget everything. Just forget Which you can't really forget it, but go ahead. Okay, forget all of the external things. Mm -hmm. Right now, we realize that the problem is the way that we think, mm -hmm. okay? And people don't know that there's different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that thoughts attract thoughts, thoughts like it, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so what is the first step to taking control of your thinking? Okay. As I said earlier, with a child, we want to be careful of what goes into the mind. With the adult, it's no differently. We think because we're older, I can subject myself to that negative music and it not affect me. I can watch those negative films and it not affect me. I can sit around and hear negative conversation and it not affect me. Anything planted in the mind must and, real, must and will bring forth. So the first thing we have to do is tap into the, mature, the maturity and consciousness of knowing that even as adults, we have to guard our mind. So that means I have to stop watching this. I got to stop looking at this. I got to stop listening to this. Guard your mind. Now, why? Because it will manifest. Oh, it will manifest. Okay. So if it will manifest, we also have to be careful of the words we choose yes. when expressing ourselves. Oh, we do. Do you think your message when you talk about the groups or the ideas that you don't agree with mm -hmm. change the way that do you think that the things you say out of your mouth mm -hmm. manifest the world that you're in because I feel like mm -hmm. we are all on the same planet, but we're not in the same world. Mm -hmm. And to me, what I realize is, is that we have to stop allowing the external world to dictate how we feel internally. Okay. So, the, so for me, the first thing that I did okay. was take over inside, mm -hmm. saying, hey, no matter what I see, no matter what I hear, like no matter what, mm -hmm. I cannot let it in. I have to analyze, I have to make sure I'm letting positive things in. And I agree with that, but we can't negate the village because as human beings, we are essentially a group-oriented people. And because we are essentially a group-oriented people, although we must do work on the individual self, we must keep a balance between self and other, particularly African people, because we are a we people. So yes, you must do that individual internal work, but then you also have to be a part of the village too. So we have to make sure we maintain that balance between self, I, and the village we. So that's not a disagreement. It's just an right. add-on. We got to make sure that that balance is there. What is the most dangerous thing in the world to you? Ignorance. Mm. Because I believe from ignorance comes every other evil. Mm. Now, ignorance. And ignorance can be fear. What, what, oh. It could be a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. Evil. The thing that I say. Greed is ignorance. Right. The thing because that I you say. got to know that you don't need anything else to be happy. Yes. And the problem with us, we've been struggling so long that it takes us to get rich to realize being rich is not what I needed and it's not going to solve my problems. Mm. For me, the most dangerous thing, and I think this is just a piggyback to you, 
is not knowing when you don't know. It is it is the wisest of persons to know that they don't know. Right. So and it is me, also the wisest of persons to know that you don't want to know everything. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? I don't want to know how good it feels to get high on crack. I don't want to know that. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to know how good it is to smoke weed all day long. I'm not going, because I recognize there's consequences that's going to come of me learning that, which could include me being addicted. You know what I mean? I don't want to know what it feels like to get knocked out in a 12 round fight. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know what it feels like to get shot. Mm -hmm. So then part of knowledge is knowing that some things are best left unknown. You understand? I don't want to know what the demonologist church, right. what they study and how they worship. That's, a, that's knowledge I don't want. Got it. You see, part of knowledge is knowing you don't need to know everything. That's why God is the only all-knowing being. Got it. For me, this is a piggyback on you. I believe that the most dangerous thing is not knowing when you don't know. And the way that I test this out when I'm out and about is I say, is the world round or flat? And the moment that you give me an answer, I say... It's dangerous that you don't know when you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think that the most important thing to remember is that the most important thing is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Meaning that for me, I had to understand that there is a difference between what I know from experience and what I know from what I've been taught. Okay. There's a huge difference. Three ways to get knowledge. Right. Study. There's a huge experience difference. Experience and intuition. Right. Okay. Got you. Perfect. So, for instance, when I was growing up, I thought the police were here to serve and protect. Mm -hmm. They used to be on the cars. It's not on the cars anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Then I realized, oh, you know, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. To know when you don't know, for me, is the perfect way to start taking control of your thinking. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm about to wrap this up real quick. I got I got a couple questions sure. from the viewers. Sure. Okay, first, what is the biggest what is the biggest demise of our youth right now? Con it's greed, conspicuous consumption, materialism, and I would add with that we live in a culture where getting attention is the most important thing for our youth, and it's dangerous. You know, the Facebook lights, the selfies, it's all about being seen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When I was growing up, video games were the great distractor. I never thought that anything would be invented that could challenge the video game for the amount of time that we wasted playing it. Right. I intentionally stayed away from video games because I didn't want to become an addict. So I never got into video games. I said nothing will ever replace video games, but social network has. And so as a certified school psychologist, I'm bothered, obviously, because I work at a job where black boys are being referred every day for reading disabilities that they don't have because they're not practicing. It appears that they do have these reading problems and that they do need special ed. When the truth of the matter is those 10 hours he's spending on social network a day. Those, at least three of those could have been spent reinforcing his academics, but they're not. Social network is the biggest time waster in American history. Being distracted <coughs> from what? Being distracted from self-development as it relates to our youth, being distracted from developing social skills that we need, especially black folks, because we don't know how to get along, okay? Being distracted from practicing your academics so that you can be an elite student, so you can qualify for the scholarships and other opportunities that are out there. Also being distracted from your time that should be spent on spiritual development, the worship, the praying, the fasting, the study, the being distracted from working on your life's work, finding out who you are, spending time with your family, uh, com uh, charity to the community. I mean, it's so many things that we and young people should be engaged in but i see too many people's lives have been reduced to going to work having a cell phone and getting on social network i mean literally this social network I, I'm, I'm almost certain that when the next dsm comes out it's going to be listed as a as, as a uh, as an addiction i'm almost yes, certain. <laughs> diagnostic it? and statistical manual of mental disorders that's the bible where all the diagnoses are so we're at dsm-5 now which has been out for maybe two years. They put them out once every 10 years or so. So basically the, the distraction is being distracted from being aligned. Without question. Okay. And as black people, we can't afford to waste like that much time on a distraction. What is attention? Attention, I'm going to say concentration, which is attention in its strictest form. 
Concentration is the ability to focus and attend to one thing to the exclusion of everything else until that thing has been completed. We lack concentration as a people. We are easily distracted. We spend the most time on social network. We spend the most, most time on the internet and we spend the most time watching television, black America. We are not focused. When we come back, we got more. I got a question from, I got a question that is hilarious about <laughs> hot girl summer. What does Dr. Umar think about hot girl summer? That is the next question. It's boom. What? Now, you do know what hot girl summer is, right? I, tell, I think I do, but I'm not <laughs> sure. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I, I actually want to make sure right, for real, for real. that I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let, let me get... Hey, can somebody call up? No, I, all right. So, I'm going to get somebody on the phone to okay. explain what hot girl summer is. Okay. It is the trend... Oh, no. Hold on. Hey, it's Boom 1039, Philly Station for hip hop and RB. 100 shooter right there. Future and Meek, and don't forget they're performing live together. The legendary Night Store is going down September 13th. I'm excited about that, man. It's at the BB and T Pavilion, so make sure you continue to listen, because we got tickets, all right? It's on air with Sir. Here's Trip by LMA, baby. Whew, I'm booming. Let's go. And Boom 1039 on air with Sir. Dr. Umar is still in the building. Dr. Umar, what is the first step to forgiveness? Forgiveness can only take place when you have the humility and wisdom to understand that you too will commit acts of offense against people that they will also consider to be unforgivable. Mm. The reason we don't forgive is because the arrogance and ego that tells us that person had no right to commit such an offense against somebody as great as I. Mm. Humble people can forgive a whole lot quicker and easier than arrogant people. Mm. Mm. What is ego? You know, there's a lot of confusion about what ego is. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of children right now that are listening. Mm -hmm. a lot of well, Sigmund Freud, the father of European psychology that he stole from Africa. But, you know, for him, ego was the essential. Ego was the individual self, the individual personality. It is the I. Which a lot of spiritualists, not just African traditionalists, but even if you go to Buddhist right or the Krishna route, they would say there really is no I. There's only the we because there's no such thing as an individual self. But the European culture created the ego. The I. So that's the illusion. That's the illusion. That's the illusion. That you are separate from the others. Mm, mm, mm. And I also have another acronym for ego, which is the European God of Oppression that operates within the black consciousness. Whew. Say that again? The okay. European God of Oppression that operates within the black consciousness. In other words, mm. they took us from they, they turned the African into a Negro, and they turned the Negro into a black man. But that black man was never turned back into an African. Mm -hmm. So he still has the ego, the European God of oppression. In other words, we think and act the way our slave masters taught us to. Ooh. Mm. What is fear? Fear is the illusion that you could potentially perish doing what's right. Not understanding that if you win, you gain earth. But if you lose, you gain the company of God in heaven. So at the end of the day, there is no loss. There's only victory. For people that live a, a fear-based life, right? Mm -hmm. Because fear is a emotion, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you attach fear to a thought, mm -hmm. then again, like I said earlier, thoughts become things, mm -hmm. right? How do you fight your fears? How do you face your fears? I often say that the purpose of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is to teach supreme self-confidence and divine fearlessness. The reason why fear is such an evil, because the only thing you should absolutely fear is supreme consciousness, almighty God, because God is the only entity that can completely destroy anything. When people say that they, they are fearing, you know, mm -hmm. like they, they fear God, mm -hmm. I don't fear God. I mm -hmm. never, I just can't, I can't understand how I can fear something I love. Mm -hmm. I can't understand where it starts because for me, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do something that I need to be afraid of in a mm -hmm. sense. You know, I'm not, I can't fear God. To me, God 
like the universe, whatever you believe in, it's my buddy, it's my best friend, it's my mm -hmm. father, it's, it's 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 my mother, it's it's everything that loves me. It's unconditional love. Love doesn't come with conditions. That's true, but punishment can also be a part of love. If you go home and you find your child uh, playing with fire on the stove, they might get a spanking out of love because you, I have to make sure that you never do that again. Do you, do you have children? Yes, two daughters. And how do you feel about beating kids? Uh, well, I don't support beating. Okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> or, you know, just I, you know, I, tapping I, them on the butt a couple times. No, I support uh, corporal punishment. I absolutely do. Uh, I think there's a place for it, but I think too often child abuse takes place instead of corporal punishment. Here's Dr. Umar's rule for corporal punishment. When a child does something they're not supposed to do, 99% of the time, they should be given a punishment that does not include corporal punishment, physical spanking, right? If my daughter turned her homework in late, failed a test, said something disrespectful out of her mouth, there's a whole bunch of consequences that I can administer that don't require me to touch her at all, right? Right. But I believe that if your child commits an offense that is so egregious, it can affect their life or affect the life of someone that they love, then spanking is definitely uh, within order. So if your son got caught in a stolen car and he crashed it, well, he could have killed himself, killed the other joyriders. He could have been charged with grand theft auto, stealing an automobile. That was a serious offense. He's going to get an ass whipping. If you found out that your uh, seven year old was starting a fire in the back of the house, just playing with fire, you're going to get an ass whipping because fires kill. Fires could have burned up grandma up on the third floor. OK, so there's no other way to. I didn't say it's the only option. OK, I'm saying that but, I totally support okay. uh, corporal punishment. When the offenses are extreme What's and, the there's a re way? and there's a reason. Well, I don't know if there's a better way than to tap that behind when they so, do something egregious. So you see, remember the now, the line? crime must be equal to the offense. No, it's not a thin line for me, because if a child is being spanked every time they commit an offense, that's child abuse. OK, you follow what I'm right, saying? Right, if a child right. is being spanked every time they commit an offense, that's child abuse. I don't think your son is going to be joyriding every day. I don't think your daughter is going to be playing with fire every day. I don't think your nephew is going to be having unprotected sex every day. I'm not spanking you because you had unprotected sex. Sex is a natural energy of human beings. You're going to get a spanking because you had it unprotected. You could have gave that girl a baby. You could have contracted a sexually transmitted disease. When the offenses are egregious, so should the consequences be. And there's a reason why we do that. You do know that, right? Okay. Go ahead. And the reason why we do that is because coming from a legacy of slavery, it was important for black parents to physically spank and punish their children because the offense you committed in this house if you did it outside of this house in front of the sheriff the Ku Klux Klan or any of these white racists if you would have spoke out of turn or didn't stop when they told you to stop it might have cost you your life so the reason we put hands on our children is so they can understand that there are serious life-threatening consequences for not having discipline and what is my definition of discipline it's the ability to do what needs to be done when it has to be done whether you like it or not and the job of every black parent in this country is to teach our sons and daughters discipline because if they do not have it by the time they leave your house this society will destroy them that's why we spank now if you spank aren't you telling your child to think the way that you're telling them to think what do you mean by that well the reason why the reason why I think that I've got the reason why I feel like that So you have to remember, there are physical consequences for black people in America because of racism, you see. And so the spanking is a preparation for something that can happen much worse if the same offense occurs okay. outside gotcha. of this home. So, so I feel like a parent will only spank their child when they don't know what to do. That's the first thing. I agree that that's what, what they say. do. Okay, you're, say. you're speaking of the reality of dysfunctional parenting. In other words, a lot of children are spanked out of stress and anger by their parents. Mm -hmm. And one of my rules when I do my seminars on child discipline, you never punish a child under the influence of anger. Never. You wait. If you just came home and you found out your son did something, don't you give him a punishment now, physical or not physical. 
Don't do it. You know why? Because you're going to go too far, you see, and you may end up taking back the punishment you gave after you calmed down to realize that that was too extreme. You never make important decisions, including punishment, under the influence of anger. You wait till you're calm. You give notice. You're going to get a consequence for coming in late. I don't know what it is right now. Part of the problem stems from the fact that we feel we have to give the punishment on the spot. Mm. You don't have to. Mm. You will get a punishment, but you're not going to get it tonight. I need time to think about it. Mm. We'll be right back. Let's boom. Yo, that's so deep. I swear. It's tight. I had a breach. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Oh, okay, okay. I see you, Megan Thee Stallion. Listen, if you want to see her perform live, make sure you make it out to May in America. And we got tickets, man. So yeah, keep listening. Download that Boom Philly app. Take us wherever you go so you don't miss out when we start giving out tickets. Here's Wish Wish, DJ Khaled. It's Boom, baby. On air with Sir in the building. I'm Boom, man. Is there a fine line <laughs> between beating your child? I don't like the word beating, though. Okay. Because I don't it's, think I'm sorry, a, I'm sorry, a spanking I'm is not I'm a sorry. beating. I'm going to start over. Is there a fine line from physically putting your hands on your child, mm -hmm. demobilizing a person? Does that start the demasking? It depends on the quality and quantity of those physical spankings. Again, child abuse is a serious issue in our community, too, because children are the only people we can beat up on who can't fight back. You understand? I don't support child abuse at all, mm -hmm. but I do recognize that there is definitely a time to spank a child in order to prepare them for the consequences that can come from white supremacy, which can be a taking of your life. Mm -hmm. When that police officer stay, says freeze, you freeze. Mm -hmm. You freeze. Because he can take your life and the whole court system will support him in doing so. But at, we at must make sure point? our children understand that we are punishing out of love. And guess what? You don't even have to explain that to them if you've already shown them the love. But I'm going to tell you where we mess up. You have a mother with a child. The father's not in the child's life or he's been incarcerated. Or maybe she don't want the child. He don't, she don't want the father around no more because he didn't want her. Whatever the case may be. The child gets to be 14, 15 years old. He's breaking the law, getting in trouble, smoking weed, selling drugs. Now she wants to call the father back. When that father calls me, you know what I tell him? You can't intervene. But doc, she calling me. My baby mom saying he, uh, he off the hook. I said, guess what? How much do you love your son? I love him. Do you want a relationship with him in the future? Yes, I do. Well, guess what? The worst thing you can do is go and physically punish that boy. Why? Because he don't know if you love him yet. You ain't even been in his life. You can only punish when a child knows you love him. Any adult that physically spanks a child who has not established a relationship of love, that's automatically child abuse. Me and you agree on that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I take your son in the room and I spank him. Your son don't know me from a can of paint. That's child abuse. The only time a spanking is not child abuse, is when that child knows for a fact that the person handing out the punishment loves me. Nobody cares what you think until they know how much you care. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, 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 I like that. So, if you discipline a child physically, mm -hmm. it doesn't enforce the fact that you are trying to force your thinking on them. No, because you can force your thinking on them without physically spanking them. <laughs> so so you can do okay. that by hours and hours in church hours right, and hours right, right. you know there's of ways course, of course, of course, you know right. i'll be in the mosque all day gotcha. like gotcha. i'd rather take a spank <laughs> like can we get up out of here right, so we didn't pray long enough we're about to wrap this up mm -hmm. i want to thank you so much for coming out thank you thank you um can i drop that fdmg bomb oh 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 i i got you okay i got you dr umar it seems like dr umar it seems like what you're trying to get across to the people is that mental health starts with education. Absolutely. And self-awareness. Tell us about your school. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your education. Mm -hmm. And tell us about how the divine mixes into this 
and why you think that it's the way to go. Okay. Well, when I was in the third grade, I decided I wanted to be a psychologist. Fourth and fifth grade, I was introduced to black history at Mead Elementary School. Sixth grade, I went on my first family reunion in Baltimore, where I learned I was related to the greatest black leader in American history, the Honorable Frederick Douglass. The rest was history. I never left none of the three. I, I, I stuck with my desire to be a psychologist. I stuck with black history and consciousness, and I stuck with what I consider a responsibility to finish the work of my great ancestor, Frederick Douglass. Uh, and what we're trying to do with the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is build a school where black boys can be taught the art of nation building and self-reliance, whether they go to college or not. Most, co most schools in America are all about college prep, getting the child ready to go to college. Well, for me, that's not a success story. It's actually a failure story because you have over 2 million African-Americans with master's and doctorate degrees who cannot find work. So if your school only exists to get a kid in college, to me, that's a low expectation. My school doesn't exist to get them into college. My school exists for them to build communities. My school exists for them to become self-employed entrepreneurs. My school exists for them to go to any African community in the world, anywhere, Central South America, Caribbean, and build up nation, build up schools, build up hospitals, build up banks, build up supermarkets, build up opportunities for other people. This is a nation building academy where we will teach agricultural and agronomical science, economic and financial science. We're going to teach science of the black man and black woman, African spiritual and astrological science, dietary and nutritional science, how to eat to live. That's the Frederick Douglass Marcus Coffee Academy. And we have two schools. Wilmington, Delaware, that we own, we bought them. We have the Frederick Douglass Building, the Marcus Garvey Building. They are owned, they are ours outright, but now we have to raise a million dollars in order to restore those buildings and hopefully have them ready to open up next fall, August of 2020, for the first ever class of Garveyites, Pan-Africanists, at the FDMG Academy. And anyone, if I may, who wants to donate to that cause can send in a donation payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. I repeat, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809, or they could donate on a cash app, cash.me slash dollar sign, FDMG School, I repeat, cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. And if they want to reach out to me directly, they can do so. Dr. Umar Johnson.com, D R U M A R Johnson.com, or by telephone, two numbers, 8444 Dr. Umar, or 215 989 9858. And if anyone wants to work at the school, they can send their resume to FDMG resumes at gmail.com. If you were to die tomorrow, mm hmm. If you could leave one piece, one quote, one paragraph with the world, with your son, with your unborn grandson, with whatever, one, you get one thing, mm -hmm. one life lesson, your whole life wrapped into one, what would you say? It would come from two of my greatest heroes. It wouldn't even be my words, it would be theirs, because I think they already said it. The one quote would come from the Honorable Marcus Garvey, who said, without confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. That will also be the second major quote at FDMG. The first major quote comes from Frederick Douglass, who said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and deprecate agitation are like men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want the rain, but can't stand the thunder or the lightning. They want the ocean, but they're scared of the awful roar of the, of the waves. He said, a man may not get all he pays for in this world, but you will pay for all that you get. And this must be paid for with blood or with blows or with both. But he who wants to be free must himself strike the first blow. He said, for 20 years, I prayed on my knees to God for freedom. For 20 years, I prayed on my knees to God for freedom, but God gave me no freedom till I got up off my knees and prayed with my feet. That's what I would tell him. What is the purpose of life? For the you? purpose of life is to fulfill one's God-given destiny on earth, to manifest God on earth. Let's go back to ancient Kemet, Egypt, right? People say, why did these black people go into the middle of a desert? and build the greatest civilization in history. But then when the astrologers studied the temples of Kemet, and we were there summer before last, they said, well, wait a minute. All these temples are laid out according to the stars. So every zodiac was represented on earth in the exact same alignment as it was. Why did they do that? Because our ancestors in ancient Kemet, which, who gave us the world's oldest and first religion, were trying to tell us 
that the purpose of life is to create heaven on earth. That's why we are here. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. If there's justice in heaven, there must be justice on earth. If there's order in heaven, there must be order on earth. If there's righteousness in heaven, there must be righteousness on earth. We were sent down here to create our father's house on this plane. Thank you. Thank you, black man. I enjoyed it. I have a shirt for you today. Yes, sir. This is our love on purpose shirt. Love on purpose. Love on purpose. What does love on purpose mean to you? Love on purpose means we must be conscious with deliberate intent with regard to showing other people that they mean as much to us as we mean to ourselves. Mm. Powerful. Thank you, my brother. And, and I think I can actually fit that. That don't look Listen. like an extra medium. Listen. I think I'm going to be all right. That is <laughs> the first love on purpose shirt ever given to someone else by me. Oh, get out of here, brother. Thank you. The I feel honored, one. man. That's oh. the very first one. How long you been having them? I just got them yesterday. Well, I'm on it, brother. Now, but I'll right. say this. I've been printing shirts for years. Okay. I've never printed a Love on Purpose shirt. Okay. Um, you print shirts? Yes. I might got to get at you then. These shirts weren't printed because love, to me, is you, you an individual design from each person. Okay. My guy, the one and only Mary J. Films is in the building. Yes, sir. He creates these tie-dye shirts. Oh, he man. Is custom making all Love on Purpose shirts with his love. So who doing the printing? Y'all do it no, together. No, we don't print for Love on Purpose. Got you. But you love do print is, shirts. Yes, I do Other print shirts. shirts but okay. printing shirts to me is like a business card. Yes, yes. You just rant, rant, right. rant, This is more rant. purpose here. Somebody created this shirt out of love, and it took 24 hours to make that shirt. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, that, that's meaningful there. That's very meaningful. What I'm yes, sir. I got that's you That's love. Yes, sir. That's love that yes, you're sir. holding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got All a question. Right. Sure. You ever have something happen to you that was so amazing that you couldn't figure out a way to say thank you? You couldn't figure out a, yes. something to do oh, yeah. to show your gratitude? You oh, know yes. that feeling? Yeah. What do you do when you have that feeling? Woo! That's a very tough question. I've had that experience so many times. I have a solution, by the way. I got something new. I need your Love solution. on purpose in the I'm, building. I'm, I might use your solution then. I'm creating the Love on Purpose favor card. It's a pay it forward card. Because I realized, in my experience, I've had this so many times. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Years ago, a guy bumped into me on the street. He said, if you let me be your producer and help you with on air with sir, I have no experience. You don't even know I'm a stranger. I promise you, you will never, never regret it. Mm. And one day, I will make it up to you. About eight years later, that same guy called me and said, guess where I'm working at now? I said, where? He said, I work at Boom 103.9. And there's a new boss in town. And she doesn't know anybody. And I told her about you. And I got wow, you. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The look Lord that. working through others. Right? Right? Yes, sir. So I'm creating a love on purpose currency, a paid mm. forward economy in a sense. I like sense, that. I like right? that. Right? with these cards and you can only receive these cards when a person has no other way to show you how much they are grateful mm. and how much they love you I like and there's it. no other way and they have to tell you the story on how they got the card so you can place meaning and value onto the card and you can never give it to someone else until you have that feeling okay I like and then that. And you pass it forward and you pass I like it forward. That. I believe that love is a currency. It with is. Love, you can get anything. An and I believe the only people that need money are the people that don't have friends. Mm. Mm. So I am creating love money. And it don't cost nothing, but it costs you your love. Powerful. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, I brother. You, man. I love yes, you, sir. Man. Yes, sir. I love you too, black man. Love on yes, purpose. Sir. Let's Appreciate go. You. Appreciate you. I'm going to let you hold on to that hanger. <laughs> let me get my hanger back. Maybe. No doubt, no doubt. But I'm going to be rocking my love on purpose, T. You know what I'm saying? All my Instagram folks. I'm about to sign off with y'all, but I just want to let y'all know. Oh, come on through. They didn't see me. They didn't see you. On air with Sir. Man, Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar, it came through, man. Thank you so much. That's right, man. It's love on purpose, man. We only love around here. Listen, man. I appreciate you so much for coming by.
No doubt. I appreciate you. Again, I'm not here to agree or disagree. I'm only That's here right. to understand. Yes, sir. You see, we got the Love on Purpose That's shirt. Right. That's this right. is the first shirt ever made, and I wore it especially for your show today. Powerful. I held on to the shirt. I was supposed to wear it last night for a date night with my lady, and I said, oh, I can't. Yes. I got to wear it with Dr. Umar yes, Johnson. Sir. Yes, sir. Love on purpose. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. My guy. Let the queen. Did they see the queen? They see the queen. Hey. They see the queen. Say what's up, Pearl. Hey, how you doing? How you feeling? It's your girl, Pearlene B. Hey. <laughs> Get my brother. What's up, bro? You already know. Mary Listen, Jane Films, baby. that's right. No, <laughs> tell everybody about the shirts. Tell everybody about your company real quick. Yes, Mary James Films. We're making shirts and doing everything. We tie-dye them, we draw on them, and we send them out to especially one by one. So wow. each shirt is made wow. just specifically for that one person. Wow. Wow. Love on purpose, man. Wow. That's love, man. Mm. All right, fam. One love to y'all. Shout out. I'm going to see everybody down Nat Turner land. Wednesday, August the 21st, Nat Turner. We're going to do the 400-year libation, 1619 to 2019. Uh, Elder Khalifa is going to do the tours. There's going to be 11 o'clock tour and a 2 o'clock tour. And we're going to do the libation at 5 o'clock. And then we're going to do the town hall meeting at 7 o'clock. Go to natturnerlibrary.com. Natturnerlibrary.com. Jacksonville, Florida. I'm going to see y'all Friday, August the 30th at the Regency Square Mall. Orlando, Florida. Hey. I'm going to see y'all Saturday, hey. August the 31st. Spread That's why I'm wearing my... Wearing my Trayvon, rest in peace to That's him. That's right, you know Trayvon. What I mean? No doubt. Saturday the 31st at the First Shiloh Church, Nashville, Tennessee, September the 7th, Brussels, Belgium, okay. September the 28th, uh -oh. Black Europe, we coming. Uh -oh. Get at me, DrUmarJohnson.com. Hold on, Go I got a sir. question. Oh my God. I had so many people asked to meet you. I had so many I had so many people asked to sit in. I had so many people that wanted to be here. I want to do a part two with a oh, live anytime. studio audience. Oh, let's, oh, do let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do any it. Any day. Any day. Listen, I'm gonna have a free watch party. Everything's gonna be free. You can come out, you can watch it, then we're gonna come straight to the audience and you can meet and take pictures. It's gonna be amazing. Let's no go. Doubt. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Okay. And make sure y'all get your FDMG donations in, y'all. We got to yes, finish God. the school up. Cash dot me slash dollar sign Dr. Umar John excuse me. No, not that one. No. Cash dot me <laughs> slash dollar sign FDMG no. school. Slash on air with sir. Send it to me. Okay? I'll take okay. you all the time. FDMG, FDMG school. school. You feel me? I gotta have some kids. I gotta to your school. You gotta do that. Let you me burn some kids real quick no and doubt. I'll send them to your school. Okay? No doubt. One love, y'all.